it was total painless <coughs> intermittent not associated with blood clots or tissue bits uh, no blood transfusion or hospital admission and not on anticoagulation or antiplatelet drugs uh, no history of lithuria pyuria or dysuria no history of urinary retention no history of constipation no history of significant weight loss or breathlessness no history of fever no history of diabetes mellitus or hypertension patient is known ckd with nitric acid 2.3 uh past history patient is operated case of augmentation cholecystoplasty with left nephrectomy for thimble bladder secondary to tuberculosis 25 years back uh patient underwent endoscopic ablation of bladder growth one year back at private hospital uh patient uh, was not on cisc uh personal history patient consumes mixed diet bowel habits normal denies addiction regular menstruation married with one live issue uh family history no significant family history uh general examination averagely built and nourished ecog score of 0 of ibrile pulse 82 per minute blood pressure of 112 by 76 mm hg uh, no pallor ectaris or pedal edema per abdomen on inspection uh, contour flat umbilical central no dilated veins palpation soft non tender no abdominal lump ear and bilateral equal uh investigations Uh, patient is hp of 9.6 uh, wbc counts of 5400 creatinine of 2.3 uh, total proteins 5.6 albumin 3.3 uh, ast 20 alt 14 uh, serum sodium 140 serum potassium 3.7 serum chloride 108 serum calcium of 6.9 uh, serum phosphorus of 2.4 serum uric acid 3.6 alkaline phosphate is 705 ptnr 0.95 uh usg was uh, uh, suggestive of uh, uh, a 45 by by 23 mm size ecogenic polypoidal lesion along the dome of bladder go to the ct scan okay. we showed the ct no yes sir yeah show the ct next slide please uh next slide next slide so la last to last week we had discussed that ultimately the biopsy had to be the adenocarcinoma and then we had to discuss about the management of adenocarcinoma so now you tell me such a patient now that you had about two weeks to look at this tape this tape What is the mechanism of malignancy in a patient with that type of cancer? How does it occur? And is there a pref- is there a difference between which bowel segment to use and its predilection for malignancy? So like you've got stomach, you've got ilia, you've got colon, right? So colon has more predisposition to form malignancy. You have right colon, which you have transverse colon, left colon, which one? Huh? Left, 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 left. Okay. <coughs> okay. Sigmoid cord. Sigmoid. Sigmoid is the one that is has the highest predilection for malignancy. Right. So, what is the mechanism of production of cancer, etc., which had the augmentation? So, actually, it can be because of chronic irritation, because of the urine. Nitrosamines also can cause. Uh, How do you know? How do you know? Hello, Dr. Uh, Samya. Can you please speak loudly? Yeah. He is a very soft-spoken guy. You have got to increase voltage a little bit. Then only he speak a little louder. What man? Hello, man. Hello. Why is that short? Hello. Hello. You are audible. Is he audible? Can you hear you now? Now it's audible. Yeah. Oh. You can continue. I asked him what is the mechanism of the production or the development of malignancy in a patient who had augmentation. Do you know? Does anybody know? Yes, uh, combination. Hey, does anybody know, man? Sir, 
sir, uh, there are certain proposed theories. There is no exact etiology. Uh, one is that uh, there is uh, uh, the uh, colonic epithelium and the urothelium being side by side. Uh, there are increased chances of uh, uh, fecal soiling, so of the urothelium. That is one proposed theory. There Second is, no is sir, there is no feces here. No, but look, sir. Uh, then colonic epithelium and uh, urothelium being side by side, there are uh, chances of development of malignancy. Second is, sir, there is a, a modification of the mucin production from the uh, colonic epithelium due to this. And third is, sir, there are uh, nitrosamines produced, which are uh, uh, probably responsible for the malignancy. Where are these nitrosamines produced from? So the bacteria, the colonic bacteria usually causes a deconjugation. That is it. You are not using the right words, man. You are not saying the right things. You are beating around the bush. It is the bacteria. And where do these bacteria come from? They are inherited. Okay. Pol polar. You cannot get rid of the bacteria. Cross migration. Although it is secret. The junction between two epithelial surfaces is always unstable. That is why most of the malignancy occurs at the ureteric yeah, 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 you look at everything. Any, any junction is unstable. That is why in surgery we always say light to light with nothing in between. Light to light doesn't mean any mucosa. If mucosa to mucosa may be the same mucosa. That's why if you have DMG urethroplasty, why does the doctor recognize that's a junction only needs to know? Two different types of epithelium. Although they're about the same, but they don't belong to each other there. So, this is one of the problems with bowel segment, and it doesn't happen in one day. See, 25 years ago, the lady was, is 38 now, she would have had the operation at the age of 13 or 12. So, that's the important thing to remember. So, it is a bacteria which are there, which get degraded, and there is urea in the urine, isn't it? CONH2. That gets converted into nitrosomine by the action of the bacteria. That is why we tell patients for the CIC at least you do overnight drainage, keep the thing down, and also reduce the, the risk of infection. Mucus will be there. Everybody will have mucus. Everybody will have mucus. These are higher chances for infection. So you must remember that. The overnight drainage will help in reducing the contact time. So what, did, what do you think you should do for it? He's got adenocarcinoma. What should be the treatment? Radical cystectomy. Radical cystectomy. Why? For adenocarcinoma of the bladder, we no. have to go for the removal of the bladder. Why? There are so many treatments available for all sorts of cancers. Does adenocarcinoma respond to radiation? Does adenocarcinoma respond to chemotherapy? Huh? Does yes, it respond sir. to radiation? The question is, is this a de novo bladder cancer or is it a colonic cancer? So, right? It's very difficult to make out. It's very difficult to make up. But on balance, this may still be arising from that colon and not primarily the bladder. Therefore, there could be an argument that why do you want to take out the bladder? While the standard of care is radical cystectomy and lymphadenectomy, there is always a room for thinking laterally and saying that is this a primary adenocarcinoma that occurs like anywhere else in the bowel. So to obviate that, what will you do? So to look for any other lesions. How will you do that? Colonoscopy. Yeah. Colonoscopy has you have to do a colonoscopy on these patients to find out whether they You have to take a history and find out whether these patients have got some familial tendency for bowel malignancy. Huh? Because we need to differentiate between these two. And this does become important. The bladder adenocarcinomas. Sorry? Which uh, I'm asking, who am I talking to? Soumya. Okay, Soumya, what are the types of bladder adenocarcinomas? 
coming from the bladder. Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we, uh, sir, spoke that uh, it is it could be coming from the colonic segment. So uh, de novo from the bladder, does adenocea occur? Yes, ma'am, it does occur. From where? Um, uh, uh, uracle, yes, yes. uracle remnant. Uracle remnant and? The dome of the bladder. Yeah, that is one. Any other place? Same. So, uh, the second answer here is coming as bladder extrophy. Is it adenosia? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Surprising, and is it? Somebody whose exposure should have squamous carcinoma. He has no carcinoma. And von, von Brunen's nest is the third answer. Arising from the trigonal area, where there is, when there is a migration, the urodectal septum comes, divides the, prim the urogen primary urogenitive sinus and into the hindgut part. During that process, some of these celomic epithelium cells will migrate into the bladder, to the trigonal. These bond brunner nests are likely to turn malignant and therefore you have trigonal adenocarcinoma occurring. Uh, when we operated this patient, she had uh, extra uh, uh, the malignancy was attached to the pelvic wall. Oh. We did an anterior excentration, but uh, we could not uh, achieve clear margin margins at two three places uh, on the lateral wall. Mm. You did lymphadenectomy also, sir. Her lymph nodes up to the paraortic nodes were involved. Oh, that's bad. So, uh, it was all uh, extravasital. And whatever was shown on CT did not correlate at all uh, with the mass which was seen uh, on the specimen. Show the, the specimen. It was very small mass. Ah, very small mass, as if the rest of the bladder is uh, normal. Here you can see that there is a, not a single centimeter of the bladder which was not involved. So was it primarily arising from the bladder area or? Yeah, about the idea. How about it? How about it? Mister Pat report. Mister Pat has come as adenosia. That much I remember. That's why we have referred her to Tata for an opinion as to anything can be done for her right now. But uh, have we done the immunohistochemistry or not? Hey, report has come. Pakka, I have seen it. Because now she is uh, uh, T4 and uh, PT3, uh, PT4 disease. So, Dr. Pranali, yesterday you saw a lady, isn't it? Yes, sir. Who's scheduled for augmentation. How old is she? Uh, 34. 34. And what is the reason for it? What is the reason for doing uh, proposing augmentation in her? Uh, she has a genetic with a uh, very low bladder capacity, about 40 mm. Right. Same lady, no? This one was the same thing, no? So, should we counsel her about malignancy? Huh? You have to. She's only 38. This lady, this girl who you see, is only 38 years old. This augmentation will go on. It can happen to anybody. 20 years. It takes that much time. I mean, a 70 year old man is a different man, ball game altogether, but in a younger person, that is why it is very important to understand the operation. Very important to choose the right patient for the job. And see whether you can actually compute. Now, the other interesting feature is that these tumors seem to occur if the bladder remnant is there. That has been my observation. I haven't found any, anything written in hard print yet. I may not have looked much, but this is my observation. Say, for example, you do a total continent diversion. That means you remove the bladder, take the cecum, and make a continent diversion. 
Those fellows don't seem to have it. Try to prove me wrong. Go and find out whether somebody who's had a continent diversion, total, that means ectopia, we say get continent diversion, brought it out, whether there's a, anybody's reported malignancy in there. They are very interesting things. This is all not the, the other thing is people we used to say that these tumors don't occur in Indians because we have got very good bowel habits and constipation and all that, which is more common in the Western world. No, no, we are seeing it. It is just that we are seeing these patients now coming and living longer. We are following up. Our follow up is definitely better than what it was 20 years ago. So, what some of our teachers told us may not actually hold true today. What I'm telling you today may not hold true when you are when you have become 30, 40 years down the track with urology. What's the telling me now? You know, these things have changed. So this has changed. So this is an interesting facet of this entire operation. And from a more personal point of view, I will never offer augmentation to somebody and stretch it like hell. Carry on, this I can't you manage the younger the person, the younger the person, the child. I will try to put it off as long as I can. Simply because the consequences are bad. I'm not talking of malignancy. I'm talking of renal failure. This lady's creatinine is directly as a result of renal failure. The guardian creatinine was 2.3. It is all because of augmentation. Have you guys heard of a guy called Ferris and Odell? Two fellows, Ferris and Odell. Have you heard of them? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of Ferris and Odell? I thought you fellows would have read all this, but that's why two weeks was given. Hello, can you observe? Yes, what I'm, not, I'm not heard of it. Not heard of it. What does he credit with? Describing for the first time that gave us an understanding of all this. Ferris and Odell were the first guys who described the phenomenon of hyperfluoritic acidosis in bowels. We did experiments on dogs, and then therefore this is translated to this, and this happened. Okay, so you go back and read this. It's very interesting. I mean, from the point of view of physiology, it's very important to understand this pathophysiology of this entire operation. And the more you see patients who have had augmentation slowly deteriorating, creatinine 1.8, 1.6, 2, 2.9, going on, the younger they are the more likely they will be to have. Now, there was a very nice article in Journal of Urology some years ago on the long-term consequences of ileal conduit. You may think that an ileal conduit, because there is no stasis, that urine is draining all the time, that the risk of real dysfunction is less. No. After 25 years, it would be a nice article in Journal long, long ago. It's not something that happened. I think it will be Gil and all these fellows reported from the US. Large series, data, 25 years follow up with patients slowly going to renal dysfunction. So even the IEA can do this, and that's true. I've got patients who have had IEA conduit slowly. You cannot predict whether a 10 year old kid today will become a diabetic and a hypertensive or develop rheumatic heart, rheumatic, rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know. These medical conditions add insult to injury. So it's very important to be very thoughtful about this. this is a great operation, there's no doubt about it. So I have not declined augmentation. It's a fantastic operation in the circumstance, given the circumstances under which you have to do it. But these are the consequences. Patients must understand this. It's not to scare them, but for everybody to know that this is what it is. Because this is what it is. I want to know. Sir, you can ask about the diversion. So what, what diversion would Soumya like to do? Uh, Ma'am, the patient's creatinine is already high, 2.3. Uh, I would like to go for a ileal conduit only. Among all the available options, I would like to Is go there for any other option? There is no other option only. Uretrostomy. Uh, yes. Uretrostomy. What type of uretrostomy? There are two ureters, no? Two ureters. One, no, no, one side nephrectomy is done. Suppose there are two ureters. Suppose the two ureters. Yeah, you're lucky that you've got one ureter. An acute is ureterostomy is done. Can it be done? Yes. What is the indication? What is the 
primary mandate for recruiting is interesting. So when uh, the The ureter has to be at least healthy enough, right? The ureter has to be dilated and Hel yeah, at least to be brought out on the abdominal surface. Yeah, you're going to come and you have to put so, it there and put it back. So, like you've got two ureters, you do, a, you do a shoot. You can, it's better not to connect one ureter to the other because in case there's blotching, compromise. So you bring the two ureters out like a double barrel, sew them together, and then it's like, you know, a sleeve inside so that your two ureters draining into one stone. Sorry? However, Surgeons being surgeons, many people have challenged this concept. Why should the ureter be dilated to do a ureterostomy? Can you not do a flat procedure and see that the ureter is so simple? So now, while the books tell you that a dilated ureter is, is the mandate for this, there are articles which where the page where the surgeons have said that this is not necessary with the modern techniques of flap. Like for example, you do mitrophonos. You put the appendix, the appendix dilated? No, it's not dilated. It's a skin flap. So they have, they have used skin flaps and all that to make sure that whatever ureter you have, if you have a mucocutaneous junction, then the risk is less. But it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It can happen. The top of stenosis, these stenosis are common. So the usual thing is that the ureter is dilated because if it does shrink, then you still have some lumen for urine to come out. I have done uh, urotrosophy on non dilated ureter also in a transplant patient. She did not want anything. She was from the Muslim faith. She did, her parents refused to accept, she was an unmarried girl, refused to accept that she would have CHC. Nothing to do, brought the ureter out here. It's not 25 years since she's been, she's having a baby. So she's. So this is all possible. I'm just saying it. So go and read up. Now that you've seen this, you go back to the journals and see whether guys have reported. This is how your knowledge broadens. I'm telling you something today. It doesn't mean that what I'm telling you is gospel truth. Don't take it like that at all. Just remember that. Whatever anybody says, it's not gospel truth. If you can question Einstein, fair enough, question it. If you can question two and two, question it. You come to a point where you cannot question anymore. Medicine is unfortunately a different subject from chemistry. Go back and there are the articles. I also did not know till I found went in literature and found, yeah, scholars have done it. Reported as in journals. So find those articles, read it, and then see what they have done, what they long term. Sir, we can go ahead to the next case, sir. Uh, I think we are to OPD. Those who want oh. to get I'll go to the OPD. Uh, sir, one question, sir. Start again, Narayan Hospital. Oh, hi. Uh, uh, suppose the creatinine has been normal for this lady. Yes. What would have been the approach? Because being adenocarcinoma, hmm. should surgery be the first priority or GA surgeons will urge for chemotherapy first? I, that's what I, I raise the issue. That I think these are two different malignancies in their in their behavior. I, I, this is my this is my gut feeling that. I don't think this is primarily an adenocarcinoma which is arising from the gut. Why? Because in the gut, you don't have urine. No. Here, this is the urine which is causing the problem. If I have a primary adenocarcinoma of the bowel, I think it is different to an adenocarcinoma arising from here. I had this discussion uh, with very senior people in the transplant field because I, I did, we did have a patient like this. And they said, yes, what you're saying is, is, sounds logical, but we have no proof. So I, I think that if you say, for example, if this patient had a good kidney, had a good kidney, and if it was clean, I know the bladder was good, but remember the bladder was augmented and not, and then therefore this bladder was, if you take out the augmented segment only and then close the bladder, so you still have a small bladder and may have frequency. But you'll be surprised. The chance of uh, meds is very high because the bowel is thin and uh, unlike the unlike the bladder muscle. Right. This probably has got a natural barrier because of thickness. 
That is why people want to be aggressive. The younger the person, the more aggressive you want to be. So. Yeah, maybe we can read about it. No, no, I think there is there is literature which is available, but not much. Simply because these are rare cases. These are rare cases. I have seen, not many, but I, wherever I have seen, only one person I have been able to save the blood. And that is because the blood enlarges. There is a transplant patient. You know, I discussed that case with last week in Kashmir. We have a long follow-up of that boy. Yeah, also, we can discuss about partial cystectomy for uh, urethral CA now that uh, yes, yes. there are a few uh, uh, papers yeah. coming about uh, that yeah. no need for a radical cystectomy. So yeah. we can uh, do that. Okay, so then we'll take your leave. We have one more case, so we'll go ahead with the discussion. Carry on with the discussion. Yeah, uh, yeah provided you all have time. Yeah, we are available, ma'am, from Mellor Narayana Hospital. We are available. Okay, then we can go ahead with this case. Next case, uh, yeah, Gaurav will be present. Uh, will somebody be answering from your side? Uh, my graduates are first years. I think it's I'm producing so the. No, no, uh, we'll keep our senior guys here. Yeah? So Vednayagam, somebody is there? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Somebody is there. He's on the firing line today. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hello, Soumya Chalu Pillo. 55 year old male resident of Goregao. Acute painful retention nine months ago. Uh, was this the first episode of urinary retention? Uh, how was it managed? First and second matters. Uh, I'm just to know about the uh, history of. How previously was managed or any disease he was diagnosed previously mm -hmm. as to the cause of uh, urine retention. Okay. Where was he catheterized? Uh, the amount of urine which was drained and what the clinic else? findings. Uh -huh. uh, the DRE findings post. Uh, are ba, are we are at still history. How can you go to DRE? Acute painful retention, you said whether he was catheterized, whether he has previous episodes of acute painful retention. What else did you ask? Uh, Ma'am, any past history of uh, urolithiasis? Urolithiasis, directly. You okay, want to relate this to urolithiasis. What could be the reasons for acute painful retention 55-year-old man? Ma'am, it can be because of uh, BEP. Okay, most commonly due to BEP. Then... Uh, Ma'am, it can be because of uh, any vesicle calculus. Okay. It can be because of uh, any uh, stricture disease. Acute stricture painful uh, retention. Okay, possible, but very unlikely. Na? Stricture disease, uh, they would not tell you acute painful retention as the first uh, symptom, right? They yes, would sir. say that there is a long-standing history of uh, something going on, urinary symptoms, and then maybe acute painful retention. So now yes, coming to the first point, you said ki it could be BEP. Yes, ma'am. So in relation to BEP, what history will you ask? Ma'am, any history of uh, storage and voiding LUTs previously? Yeah, so that is important, finding out whether he has previous history of any LUTs. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Okay, what else? Uh, what is in history related to BEP and acute painful retention? We need to know whether the patient had long-standing bladder symptoms. So, because this could be also chronic on uh, acute on chronic retention, right? Yes. He could be having some symptoms going on for a long time and then yes. now he has an episode of acute retention, anything which precipitated it. Yes, ma'am. What will be the precipitating factor? Ma'am, uh, usually uh, intake of uh, alcohol or uh, cup syrups, these usually cause precipitated retention. Okay, anything else? Uh, if the patient is taking any anticholinergic. 
for you uh, start on day one no? on day one of starting the anticholinergic he could have acute urinary retention but not a history no? yes if there is a history his body will be used to that level of anticholinergics yes okay what else any uh, delayed act of micturition which might have caused a retention okay anything else Is history of constipation relevant? Uh, uh, yes, history of constipation is also relevant. What are the types of retention you know of? Uh, acute retention, chronic retention, acute or chronic retention. Any other classification? What do you mean by spontaneous and precipitated? Uh, in the precipitated retention patient, there is usually a factor which causes uh, this uh, this episode of retention. And in spontaneous, there is no uh, there is no relatable factor which could be associated with uh, the retention episode. If it is a precipitated retention, then the chances of uh, success of trial void is more. In case of spontaneous retention, the chances of trial void success is less. What are the chances of going into retention again and requirement of surgery in cases of spontaneous and precipitated? Uh, it's in spontaneous. It is relatively higher, sir. Do you know the percentage? Uh, no sir it's given in campbell yeah Kam kamlesh wants to answer so no. go ahead question in relation to acute retention what suppose a patient presents with acute retention and you offer him surgery in the next week or in the next few days yes ma'am what are the problems in this scenario i'm surgery for bp ma'am yeah of course painful retention no ma'am vascularity will be more in such acute cases so okay. will and be a non non neurological problem not related to the surgery like bleeding vascularity or whatever that and that is not the issue what is the other other thing which has been noticed okay you read about it yes ma'am okay we'll go ahead with the slides because even we have our ot yes ma'am So here TUC attempted and failed, so suprapubic catheter was inserted. Yes, ma'am. So now, what do you feel is the problem? In this scenario, what could be the problem? Ma'am, uh, I would like to know, like at the time of uh, PUC catheterization, what difficulty was encountered? Uh, why were they able not able to catheterize? Were they able to feel any obstruction? If if so, then at uh, what level? How much length? Uh, sir, ma'am, I would like to know about that details. And one more important thing: the type and size of the catheter. It was many times many small centers they use rubber catheters. Yes, sir. Type or the size of the police catheter which was tried. Yes, sir. Sir, it's not audible, sir. You saying that the and uh, uh, the size of the catheter and the type of the catheter which was used needs to be noted yes ma'am yeah so now why is that important and we can assess up to what caliber stricture or what caliber narrowing uh, we may see we may okay. okay so now if this is the scenario acute retention catheterization not possible what will be the probable diagnosis Catheter is getting blo blocked at the level maybe about 15 centimeters from the UM. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, it can be because of uh, stricture. Okay. 
sphincter urethra it can be because of uh, any prostatic urethral calculus urethral calculus okay uh it could also be because of bep if there is an enlarged median lobe and causing uh, obstruction and difficulty in catheterization okay what else bladder neck stenosis uh huh primary at the age of 55 without prior history of surgery what else can be the problem most common problem most common problem is catheterization is not done properly and you are in a false passage yes ma'am oh forceful catheterization just yes. uh, inserted in a hurry and you yes. can have so whether there was bleeding is important to know okay he was on spc we give you the next history next slide there is no history of urological interventions no constipation no diabetes hypertension no history of weight loss pedal edema is this important is this slide necessary yes ma'am ma'am uh, presence of pedal edema uh, presence of lower limb swelling uh, this indicates about uh, some pathology in the pelvis like ca prostate metastatic ca prostate with uh, lymphadenopathy may lead to bilateral yes, pedal edema we are asking about pedal edema and facial puffiness so what is more important sir uh, facial suppose puffiness this, suppose this would have been a painless retention of urine yes sir patient comes to you that i have not passed urine since morning and he yes sir then Yes, sir. Sir, it may be because of the renal failure, long-standing obstructive urethropathy. Yes, yes. You have to differentiate whether he is in retention or he is in oligorrhea or aneurysm. Yes, sir. That is very much important. Yes, sir. Okay. Suppose this patient would have come to you directly when he was in retention. What would have you done to increase the chances of of successfully being catheterized? uh first i would like to do per urethral catheterization sir uh, so installation of uh, installation of lignocaine jelly up to 20 ml perineal massage before before going directly to the catheterization you should anticipate whether it might be a stricture disease or it might be a prostate yes sir so you should have uh, you should have told that you should ex- i will examine the patient first to anticipate whether there is any like if there is a changes how is the meatus and whether is there any other patient does not have any history of uh, prior catheterization or intervention yes sir yes okay. yes sir so your primary suspicion is uh, picture disease uh, sir i would note like to know about the examination findings sir the examination of the external genitalia we tell you the findings He is a chronic tobacco chewer. Sir. Operated for inguinal hernia. Yes, sir. And he was diagnosed as CA prostate five months back. Yes, sir. Sir, this is one of the delayed presentation of CA prostate, sir. Acute during retention. So he is already a known case of CA prostate. So. What would you like to know in detail? Sir, any history of back pain, back ache? First, he has already been diagnosed. Yes, sir. So, obviously, you would like to know the details of his staging and what was the initial yes, presentation, why, and then why, based on what, with a clinical suspicion or just based on PSA, he was diagnosed. Yes, sir. so wouldn't you like to know the details of his disease status as such and what kind of treatment he has received for the same yes sir yes, sir i would like to know about the psa levels the imaging status in order to classify as a classification of the disease yeah uh, uh i will tell you in the subsequent slides okay okay uh, in general examination uh, general condition is moderate pulse of 86 blood pressure of 112 by 
Yeah. Uh, abdomen normal. Uh, on DRE, grade one prostate heart. Uh, uh, I would like to know where was the hardness encountered? It was only on one side or both the sides? Both the sides. Both the sides. Okay, sir. Any other important thing on DRE? No, no. You would like to know whether the mucosa was free or not? Yes, sir. That is very much important because now this patient has presented in retention. So, very high likely that he would undergo some kind of surgical intervention. Yes, sir. It is a curative intent or just a palliative for his retention that we don't know of as of now. But yes, sir. He is a surgical candidate. So, you would like to know whether the inner uh, rectal uh, muco, inner mucosa is free or not? Rectal yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. What would, you, what would you like to do next? I would like to know about the serum PSA. This is the previous serum PSA. Yes, sir. Twenty two point seven three. Next. So that also. Uh, uh, I would like to know about the uh, prostate biopsy report in order to classify this disease and the MRI report. What we'll do is, Soumya, we'll give, we, are, we are giving you all these investigations, okay? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you think about it, everything, and then we'll discuss the management uh, later on. Okay, ma'am. Because it is already quarter to ten. Nowadays, y'all are joining very late. Why? Why is that so? Uh, ma'am, actually, uh, we had rounds today morning, ma'am. A couple oh. of weeks for because that. normally we used to start at 8 30, then by 9 30 yes, we could finish, na? Yes, ma'am. I will start by 8 30. Yeah, next time. So we are leaving you with the biopsy report and the PSA, and you know the history. So you can discuss yes, among uh, yourselves. We will uh, uh, just uh, think about what investigations would you like to know and uh, what is your aim in doing these investigations. Okay, ma'am. Okay, and then we can think about two or three options. Like if this patient is localized malignancy, if he is locally advanced, and if he is metastatic. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So it's quarter to ten. That's why we'll continue next time. Or if yes. you want, and if sir has time, we will do it tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am